and it looks like it's going to be another video today because we're on a roll well, I'm on a roll with this wherever I am and I'll try and explain in this video what's happening here a bit better because it's your comments that are clarifying it here a bit lighty here isn't it blue on my eyes doesn't matter it's the screen can't do anything about it right uh, comments this morning um, I'll I'll leave out names because people probably get upset or not upset but scared of making a comment just in case I mention their name and maybe have a go at them and their ego will be damaged we don't want damaged egos so someone made a comment again this morning about what money is and surely it's based on labor physical labor now I just get the idea from the comment which was yesterday and repeated today that the comment wasn't based on thinking it was based on pub talk now this is probably wrong of me but I've just written back for the second time saying no money is not based on labor but that's not because I don't think money is based on labor that's because I think that the comment came from somebody who didn't think that money was based on labor but was repeating that money was based on labor because that's what he she has always said and that's what gets me I, I'd like to have I think I can spot in comments and videos and out there in life people that have got in there and really created their own ideas and ones that have just gone yeah that sounds good um, I think I'll repeat that one as well okay now having belittled somebody who said that money is based on labor I am go now going to say that money is based on labor but uh, this is more from uh, a slough comment I was just thinking there maybe for slough of despond that we should shorten to sod um, maybe we should get another name there it sounds a bit funny anyway sod um, wants to know more about why I go on about energy so much or where the energy connection is to money and energy is based on labor everyone knows that um, just imagine back in the old days old days of um, uh, before the industrial revolution what was what was money based on what was the economy based on what was life based on um, it's labor and that's all it was wasn't it then you got let's let's go into the industrial revolution and coal or something mm. it's a bit of a quick jump but it, has everyone got that that in the old days before the industrial revolution you were cutting crops with a scythe swish swish you planted it by throwing the corn out or whatever it was with it, from a basket and you tilled the, the soil with a, a tilly tilly thing or you might have used horses you would have used horses or oxen for tilling the land and that was the labor of the horse and the oxen but we get to coal and uh, now oil and natural gas and things well that's just the same thing as horses and oxen and before the people it's just human ingenuity thinkings channeling energy labor the labors often now done by coal gas and oil uh, where it was done by horses and oxen or people it's exactly the same thing it's channeling energy or labor call it what you like um, energy's probably a, a, a better coverall for it it was the energy of the horses it was the energy of the humans but always remembering it kind of channeled through the the brain of the human whether it was fashioning an arrowhead or making an iPod that is energy that's fashioned through the brains of a human that's all anything is really certainly in the economy wise you can say love is a bit different from that but that might end up in a similar way as well but that's another point um, so that's that's your economy it's it's energy and with well, you can imagine in the old days that you had your horse and oxen and people not much of an economy because there was limits to in land what you could do with the human the oxen and the horses 
Then you've got coal, and you could do a lot more with your great big puffy, puffy steam engines, whizzy, whizzy thing on top, letting the steam out. Whoosh. Got that down to pump out uh, mines so they could get more coal, more steam engines, more energy, more power, more labor out of that power to do all sorts of things. Then spinning mills they got from water and steam and, you know, everything. Now we've got all sorts of stuff. Uh, the electricity that goes into the a battery of an iPod is generated by energy. I mean, the, the iPod is generated by, you know, it's, run, it's still being run on energy. And the invention of it, the manufacture of it, the transportation of it is all energy, it's labor. So uh, that's, that's basically it. That we've come up the, up the slope of energy, getting more and more of the coal, the, the oil, and all that sort of thing. Oil was only really started coming out of the ground 150 years ago, and it's gone wash up like this, and they're just running out of the cheap stuff of it. Uh, so much coal has been used, natural gas is coming on as well. But we're so used to, and there's 7 billion of us using lots and lots and lots of it, that we need a huge amount of this energy now to keep the complexity of our civilization together. And, okay, there's an awful lot wasted, so there's probably be a plateau at the top as we can economize. Uh, example would be European cars are a lot, lot smaller because we've been economizing for a lot, lot longer. Well, a lot longer, uh, you know, 20 years, 30 years longer. The uh, United States can do that. Uh, but there is the Eastern world are coming on from their old labor of uh, hand labor and horses and oxen are getting to mopeds and cars and using an awful lot of these modern energies and there's no stopping that so there's going to be a real fight at the top uh, between us getting more um, energy efficient and them just wanting to use more and more and more and more of it and that balance of us trying to be more efficient and them just using more of it is going to cause global tensions because we'll think we're being awfully jolly good and think they're being awfully jolly wasteful but we've just been through 100 years of their awful, jolly, wasteful phase, and it's very hard to deny people um, what we've just had, and stuff like that. And I've gone on a bit with that one, haven't I? Okay, um, I'll go on about iNet. Uh, Richard put a comment through... I can shut that off now. Uh, Richard put a comment through which hopefully sums up the um, opinions, thoughts of a lot of you lot, which is... Um, uh, you've said an awful lot there, Nick. You seem to be ex getting excited. We want to play along, but quite frankly, you're flying around over there with all these thoughts going on. How can we possibly comment on it? It's just, it's, 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 it's such, it's, everything's covered all over the screen. It's covered in comments or covered in, you know, ev the economy, energy and money and money creation, endogenous money and all that. How can we possibly comment? Because you need an in to, to all these things, to all to the way of understanding the economy which fills the screen. You, you, can't, you need to go in there at a certain track. Now, this is what's excited me because I've never had that certain track before, besides the energy track that I could see that was absolutely crucial. I had that one. But that is, as I described it yesterday in a comment, it'll kind of take care of itself. It might cause a global war um, when we get the, the, the bother between us being e economic and them pumping it still. Um, and that could be, you know, a global war might be a bit of a tragedy, but otherwise it's going to come on click, 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 slowly enough that... Um, come the point where the world leaders will just, it'll be so obvious to absolutely everybody, even, you know, um, Fox News people, that all this fuss is because we're running short of cheap energy, that there will be no uh, choice but to just not get together and do something, but there can't be any real di uh, um, d discussion over the major cause of the problem, which is there's just no cheap energy left. Um, and when when you've got a, a fact that's that established, it should calm down the discussion, the aggra aggravated discussions about it, because it just will be a fact that just will make itself appear and be unavoidable. And it's going to come on slowly. They're going to use a lot more. We're going to use a lot less. 
but it'll go up down slowly it won't cause a great big earthquakey crash type thing but the money thing could cause a great big earthquakey crash type thing which could actually be as bad as a world war because I can't explain why but I just think it can be okay so on the money thing we've got Nick and his iNet um, George Soros and Steve Keen and Krugman and the Berlin conference and why am I getting excited right uh, Soros he might have done something naughty in the war who knows but the war was 50 60 was 60 years ago um, I, th I, th I think he's stepping down as total fund manager for his um, uh, fund now but I know last year he pulled in about five billion dollars and I think the year before he was at five billion dollars and I haven't heard that he's crashed like Paulson this year so he's probably on for another five billion dollars now that is an awful lot of money he's no fool right because he does it consistently has done it consistently for decades not five billion but the equivalents going on and is mega wealthy um, believes in a lot of this free market stuff but also note that he was the I think the second biggest donor to the Obama campaign of 2008 now I think he's sitting out this campaign and I don't think he's contributing but Rob Johnson who organizes most of the INET stuff he's politically a apolitical doesn't go in for politics when he's doing the INET stuff so much but if you listen to him giving speeches outside he's a definite lefty so we've got this strange thing where you've got Soros and his evil free market money grabbing on one side sponsoring quite a lot of what is lefty stuff and the INET conference doesn't look to be political at all it just gets the best people from across the economic world you've got actual government ministers treasury ministers the um, the um, what you call it the overseers of money the ones that are meant to be um, forgotten the word for it where the government appoint people to see that the industry stays in check they're there um, economists are there the actual investors are there uh, you know the, the the market analysts are there everybody's there and they are the they he, they just pay for the for the best people the most influential people to be there sit them in the room for two days or is it three days and conference them up from first thing in the morning at orange juice to last thing at night um, chinky chinky uh, 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 and it's stuffed in there now why am I getting excited about Steve Keen normally he'd, he'd probably get a 10 minute slot he would do his talk he would probably say endogenous money creation in other words bank creation and it would be one phrase in an absolute weekend of brain fest but now the Krugman thing has clipped in and Krugman said well people that do go to Berlin that support me should have a go at Keen so it's been elevated in position so uh, Keen will certainly get it out there and s other people will probably challenge him on it so it will be a point and it won't just be a point because the last two conferences have been about the crash and what happened and they were starting to move towards well how can we create a better economic uh, system but they weren't really getting anywhere and I, I could see that the next conference would be a bit waffly because how can you've you've got the system and the best you can really do is say how best you can monitor the old system but getting endogenous money out there is for me absolute tops because I've got besides the energy thing I've got two things on the money side that I think if the people knew these two things would it change things in the in the whole economic system one is MMT and the other is money bank money so you ask somebody when you go for your mortgage where do you think that money is coming from now they should be asked they should know anyway as in I would want to know 
but 99% of the people wouldn't have a clue if you asked them that question. Now, I'm not just saying that they wouldn't know that they created the money from nowhere, because I suspect that the money doesn't actually have to all have to be created from nowhere. Some of it could be depositors' money, but we'll leave that on the side. But even if it's depositors' money, so you're taking depositors' money and giving somebody 250000 money as for a mortgage, and that person must, should think, or should be pushed into them, that some savers have put money into that bank and now we're lending you the money. In other words, are we sure everything's right here? Because this is a big thing to do to take savers' money and give it to you. Or, which I think is a parallel thing, the bank could just go, well, we just type it in on, on your account and you can then just go and spend it. It's not being taken from savers' money or anything. And i just looking at it from the point of view of the person taking out the mortgage and how they should be sent away feeling this is the biggest decision of their life they should know more about it than they do they should be told somewhere along the line this is where the money is coming from it's savings money that you are now going to take away and spend here and are expected to spend back it's a big decision or the bank actually just types up money and puts it in your account what do you think of that I'm just thinking how the people should or would react when they know just a couple of sentences or a paragraph that explains where all this mortgage money comes from. The great housing booms of Spain and UK and the US, do they think that all that money was depositors' money that was put in there? Do they think that there are those many people in those countries that do that much saving? Do they know where the money comes from? And without that small one page description of where the money comes from I don't think people should be taking out mortgages with such ignorance there should be a certain amount of input that should be put out there taught at school taught on the television taught somewhere that this is where the money comes from this is basically how this that's that system works and I think as long as they had that one page of information that they could all be happy that they could all discuss at um, the golf club or down the pub that's where the money comes from i think that would be a very good thing for civilization and on the other hand which i won't go into too much at all is the mmt thing are taxes used or are taxes torn up that's the shorthand for it it's a bad way of saying it but how constrained are governments on their spending can that 85-year-old uh, have a hip replacement or can the government not afford it? And if the government can't afford it, exactly why can't the government afford it? Again, in one page, one A4 page should be able to write down why the government can't afford that thing. And if it's just, well, we all we, we go for the tyranny of the balance sheet, then it's the tyranny of the balance sheet that we must make our books balance there must be I would say the, the bottom paragraph of it why they must make their books balance why the bank must make its books balance and explanation is that we have to get into people is what the difference is between our balance sheet as in if we don't earn enough money to, for our spendings difference between a bank's balance sheet what their earnings is for what their spendings might be and similar for the government and what the differences are that could be the third piece of paper but I think that sort of explanation of what money is and how it works should be because it's so hyper important to absolutely everyone out there it's the minimum sort of knowledge that should be out there and available and absolutely grokked by everybody and it should not be beyond the wit of man to be able to put it on three pieces of paper that e even the hard of thinking can get their little brains around but it's not going to come unless it's taught to the people that teach so the big hitting economists have got to get it right because it's their stuff that is taught to the teachers of economists and the teachers of economists have the influence that they know what money is and their influence goes to school teachers uh, bankers and politicians and Keane should 
I hope, excitedly, should be the tip of a wedge that is starting to drive via the INET conference up into that influential sphere. That is why I'm so excited. Bye.